Hello there and welcome to this video. My name is Riley and today I'll be doing a fundamental analysis on the cryptocurrency which is known as LISC. Now LISC is a very exciting prospect but before I go any further I want to just disclaim this video um, by saying that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice and it's just for educational purposes only. I advise you to use this as one source of information when making your de uh, decision to invest in this cryptocurrency or not and never invest anything that you are willing, you're not willing to lose. So, just before I get into this video, this is what we're going to do for this video. We're going to look at what is LISC, then we're going to look at the features behind it, and then why is it useful, what are the use cases of it, what step makes it stands out from other cryptocurrencies. Then we'll do a little analysis and check up on the team and the community behind it, then we'll look at how you can buy and store your LISC in uh, exchanges and wallets. And then a look at the roadmap, some highlights from the roadmap, and then my thoughts on the future of the LISC project. And then a quick short to medium term technical analysis. So without further ado, let's get into it. So if, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, um, what, I'm, what I usually do is I take each of these headings and I'll put a timestamp next to them in the description box. So if you only want to see a specific part of the video, you can click on that timestamp in the description box and it'll take you to that uh, specific part of the video. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? So now let's get into it, shall we? What is LISC? Well, LISC is a blockchain application platform which allows people to write and code in JavaScript in order to build, develop, monetize, and distribute, uh, distribute their decentralized applications or dApps um, with their own cryptocurrencies and their own customized sidechains. And keep sidechains in mind as it's going to be a big talking point later on in the video. Now, LISC was formed, this is just a fun fact, LISC was formed from a previous project called Crypti by Max Kordek and Oliver Beddoes in May of 2016. The LISC token, which, is the, which has um, the name LSK, is used to pay for fees um, or make transactions within applications built on the broader LISC network and framework. So... The coins for LISC, we currently have circulating 115.3 million coins. 15.3, yeah, yeah, doesn't matter, I said it right the first time. And the total, we don't have a current max, but I'll talk about that later on in the video as well. The block time for LISC is also very quick, um, at 10 seconds. So that allows for a lot more scalability than something like Bitcoin, even though they're built for different things. Scalability is needed nonetheless. So some features of LISC. Well, first of all, instead of, um, if you're familiar with Ethereum, you would know that it uses a program language, programming language called Solidity. And this was designed and created by the uh, creators of Ethereum for Ethereum. And this meant that people, when they wanted to use and when they do want to use Ethereum as a platform to develop on, they have to learn this Solidity language in order to do it. And to make things easier, LISC has used JavaScript, which is one of the most uh, widely known programming languages out there, to give blockchain accessibility to so much more, so many more developers around the world. And the more use you get from developers on a platform, the more value you will get out of it, and the higher price generally you will get from the cryptocurrency. And like I said before, LISC uses something called sidechains. And what sidechains are, they're a separate blockchain which is attached to a parent chain through a two-way peg. And you don't really need to know what a two-way peg is. Um, you just need to know that it is something which allows the transfer of assets between the parent chain and the sidechain. And this is how our sidechains are able to be executed. So sidechains allow for much further scaling across the network, like I said before, and they have potential uses with smart contracts. And I want to make this very clear. This is only with sidechains. This is not with the actual list blockchain. It is not a smart contract platform, but you can use it. You can use them and execute them on the sidechains because you can develop the sidechain however you like because they're so customizable. You can also use them for beta releases of cryptocurrencies, 
Um, and for those who don't know, a beta release is like a, a prototype release to do testing and things like that on. And then the issuing and tracking of assets, so for things like stocks and bonds and plenty of other things. Um, like a normal proof of work blockchain, on sidechains you will need miners in order to prevent attacks on that specific sidechain network. And the difference between these sidechains and other proof of work blockchains is that on these sidechains you do not get a block reward as an incentive to run the network and secure the network. But you do get on the side change, you do get the transaction fees, although they are very, very low. And it is still not economically viable to um, mine on the side chains if you are just doing any a random old mining. But if you've got to think about this, if a lot of people will be developing um, platforms on side chains for companies and things like that. And because the companies want to build their own application platforms and other things which they can keep uh, ledgers and records of. And the incentive for them is that they want to secure their information. They want to secure their network, their, network, their data, and possibly their application. So they will get the transaction fees from that network, but the main incentive for something like that is because they want to ensure their own security. And side chains, although they are very good and I do love them, they do have currently uh, one negative, I should say. And this is where SPV, or also known as simple payment verification, and this is something which is used as a part of a two way peg. You don't need to know how it works, you just need to know that um, it is used in a two way peg. And so an SPV can be tricked into crediting more coins. Um, then we're already there, which uh, which can only happen on the side chain. And if the attacker transfers those coins from the side chain to the parent chain, it will actually take coins from another user's wallet on that side chain. And what it will do is create a permanent dissonance between the two chains. And a dissonance is like a permanent disagreement. So in order to prevent this, the only way you can prevent this, the parent chain needs to soft fork so that both chains are able to validate transactions. And one of the big um, questions people always ask when talking about sidechain technology is if a sidechain wants to hard fork, does the main chain have to hard fork as well? And the answer is no. If a sidechain hard forks, the main chain carries on like nothing had ever happened as it is linked, but it's not directly linked to it. Sidechains also can use other protocols um, which I mentioned before how they're customizable. So you can design them to use a proof of work or a mining protocol, or you can use a proof of stake protocol, which is where you stake your tokens for that specific network and in order to validate blocks. And if you try to um, do anything malicious to the network or create fake or um, I guess you'd call them malicious blocks, um, your coins will be burnt and you will have lost them forever. So that's another way of doing it. And proof of work was the first uh, blockchain protocol and then proof of stake came shortly after it. And this leads me on to my next uh, point, which is that list does not use proof of work or proof of stake. It actually uses something called delegated proof of stake. And this is kind of like a second generation proof of stake, I think. It combines the proof of stake uh, protocol with a consensus algorithm. And what this means, the consensus, is that every list holder gets a vote for the main chain delegates on the network. And these are the people who secure the network. Now, there are 101 main chain delegates which will be elected at all times. Um, it will always be 101. This is the number decided by the people who developed the LISC protocol. And the way that these main chain delegates get elected is through voting from the whole network. So if it will be the top 101 people who get the most votes from the network that will become the main chain delegates. And this voting occurs uh, re uh, frequently, I should say. And every other delegate who doesn't get voted in as a main chain delegate is either on standby waiting and trying to become elected or they are busy securing a side chain. 
Now, reward sharing and ambassadors is another part of delegated proof of stake. And the first part is reward sharing. And this is where delegates can organize reward sharing setups to give a portion of their block rewards to the community. And also Lisk for the ambassador part, Lisk will also be released. Um, Lisk will also release LSK into the um, ambassadors from each country to help promote local a local ecosystem. And I guess you could say evangelize the Lisk platform. Oh, yeah, evangelize the Lisk platform. So now, why is it useful? Well, for a couple of reasons. First reason. Just like we talked about before, it uses JavaScript. This is a widely known and largely utilized pro um, programming language, and it has been used by small and large developers, and two of the biggest developers who use Java and are really keen on Java are actually Microsoft and Google, and these are two of the biggest companies in the whole technological space um, in the whole world. And also with the SDK, which is going to be released next year, you can develop the back end of your application. Oh, and by the way, an SDK is a software development kit. So this allows you to build um, applications on the list platform. And so you can build the back end of your application, which is the functionalities of it, the features of it. And then you can build the front end, which is the user, inter user interface of your platform. And what this, why this is useful is just because it saves a lot of time and increases efficiency and um, helps with security of between the two front end and back end. Also, Lisk is able to execute blockchain services, so things like identity services, services um, cloud storage services, and smart contract execution on the side chains, just like we said before. So let's have a look at the team, the community. First of all, we'll talk about the community. Um, they got quite a good community list, um, not huge, but it's still solid nonetheless. They have an official list blog on their website. Um, they've got a Twitter with 83,000 followers, which I follow, and it has regular updates on it. They also have 20,000 Reddit readers um, and 20,000 likes on Facebook and follows on Facebook. So now let's have a quick look at the team just to see who we're dealing with and the people behind it. And I want to say that probably it doesn't their team doesn't let them down but their team isn't an all-star team I should say um, they're not people who have been working in multi-billion dollar companies for the last sort of 15 20 years but you can't really expect that in a blockchain project anyway so um, the two biggest and best, well, not the biggest and best, the two people who've had probably the best experience in larger companies I found was Marchai and Tobias. Um, they're both developers, and Marchai is a core developer. He worked for Nokia um, in Wrocław, in the Wrocław area, in, which is a region in southwest Poland. Um, so Nokia is a big good company and he worked there for nearly three years so that's a good thing to have on your resume and also Tobias um, he's a full stack developer and he has quite had quite a few years experience working with the NXT project and also working with the Waves project so these are two very well known cryptocurrencies in the space but like I said before the team's not uh, exceptional no discredit to them at all um, and that's, I'm saying exceptional in terms of previous work experience. They're actually quite a good team who give a lot of uh, good updates. And although people say that they are sort of behind on when they're releasing things and like stuff like that, I think that's good because they want to make sure that things are right, things are working properly, and they're not giving out things which will... Um, you know, we'll have hacks like we've seen with the parity wallet hack on Ethereum. They want to make sure it's robust, secure, and reliable um, whenever they're releasing anything. And that's good to see because that means they care about the project. Um, so yeah, the team, solid uh, in terms of experience, that is solid, not uh, excellent, but in terms of team application, um, I really do like them. So now let's talk about where you buy and store your Lisk. So you buy it on um, 
quite a few exchanges, uh, not a heap, just like the team, there's not a heap, but it's still solid nonetheless. So you can see Bittrex here, Polo, and Binance are probably the two most widely used ones, I'd say, by people. Um, most people either have a Bittrex or a Binance account, so most people have access to the list token. And as LISC is um, more, as it becomes more developed and we have more releases and becomes uh, large, more widely known in the community, uh, we will see it come onto some more bigger exchanges, hopefully in the future. But that's a good sign. We can see here we've also got some good, good liquidity. This is a combination of all the exchanges, but to give you an example, Bittrex has had $10 million in volume over the last 24 hours, which is not huge, but it's still really good. And to store, this is probably the thing that I dislike least about the project. Um, and not to say it's a bad thing, but they only have really two places that you can store your LISC, and that's either on the official LISC wallet, which is a desktop wallet, which I store my LISC on, or an unofficial mobile wallet. So um, what I would really like to see is uh, hardware wallet compatibility with LISC and that would make it really, really good. So now let's talk about the roadmap and the future of um, Ethereum, the future of LISC and my thoughts on it. The roadmap has been separated into five different phases and those are inception, resilience, expansion, ascent and eternity. And so... Inception was really 2017, this year, and um, from looking at it, Resilience seems to be the two, mostly 2018, and the, one, the other ones in the future haven't really been released yet, so I haven't put anything next to them. But for the upcoming ones, we can see as a part of Resilience, we have the LISC rebranding, which was just announced at the Berlin meetup probably a week or two ago, which will be on the uh, 20th of February, 2018. Then they will be uh, doing things like releasing and um, modularizing the LISC SDK, which is a really, really big one. That'll be something to watch out for um, in terms of the price because this will allow further development, like I said before. And it'll also um, implement increased features, for example, decentralized exchanges and mobile clients, which are two other big things coming up. From then on, we have more advanced features like a sidechain explorer, uh, which is sort of like a uh, like the app store for Lisk and for blockchain, I guess, which is one of the really good talking points about Lisk, is that it's aiming to be sort of this iTunes of um, iTunes of the blockchain, even though they, the creators haven't said it, it's just the community has said it and it seemed to stick. Also, sidechain security upgrades, just more robustness, um, smart contract support, which will be a big thing. Um, and then third-party tech support, um, which is also a really big thing. So what this is, is you the developers will have access to libraries and tools um, for coding, which will promote efficiency. So they don't have to code necessarily things, everything from scratch. They can use templated things in order to code much quicker. Then they'll be able to develop trustless apps with proof of stake being implemented into it. Um, and after that, they're going to look at scaling LISC more to get it enterprise ready. They don't need to yet because there's not really a demand, but over the next sort of decade, we will need this once. Um, uh, what, what do you call it? Once. Um, oh my God, I can't even remember. Um, once mass adoption comes out, that's it. Um, and then Eternity will be proposal voting, which is a small thing, um, but it's a good thing for community projects nonetheless. Also, just a bit of info, LISC has partnered with Microsoft Azure. Um, so this is a big thing. Um, so now developers can develop, test, and deploy LISC blockchain apps using the Microsoft Azure cloud computing platform and structure. Just like we talked about before, how it has blockchain services, we can already see an example of how this is already being used. And the project's already just getting started. So it tells you, the um, it sort of gives you an indication of what the future of LISC is in for. Now I just want to give you a couple of thoughts and things to think about. 
a lot of people think that Lisk is either a fork of Ethereum or that it's just like a twin of Ethereum when it's not. It is similar in its design and it will in its purpose, I should say, but it does have a lot of defining features which t um, target a much different audience. So with Lisk, you've definitely, you've got things like Java, so you want to reel people in using JavaScript and Lisk has been sort of a thing which is um, touted to be, move on into the sort of the mobile world and become like the iTunes and App Store of the blockchain. And although Lisk and Ethereum are similar, they do have different things. Um, but I think a lot of people think that platforms, these D app platforms, um, which they're only D apps are only one part of both Lisk and Ethereum. They think that platforms which create D apps, there will only be one ever created. And like I said in my Dash video, this is just not true because cryptocurrencies in general and in their own niches and categories are just technology. That's all they are. And so not everyone likes one specific technology. That's why we have variations of technology. That's why we have brands and models and things like that. And so I think Lisk will target one audience and Ethereum will target another audience and then we'll have other blockchain platforms targeting other audiences. So I think Lisk and Ethereum both have really big futures ahead of them. And in terms of going into 2018, I think Lisk is going to have a really, really big year. I think we've already seen double digits in Lisk and we're going to see much, much for a larger growth in Lisk because of this new uh, rebrand and the SDK launching and other things which are coming to um, increase its robustness and reliability. But the biggest thing is that SDK because that allows them to develop on it, promote the list blockchain and increase the list network. So I don't really have a price point that I could see list going to, but I really do see some big, big growth in list over the next year. All right, so technical analysis time, just to cap things off. We'll go and we'll look. You can see I've got the USD chart up here now, and I want to zoom out. And as we can see, just to recap of the last couple of months, we've come up here probably around, I think it was yeah, uh, June, and then we formed this pennant, and we broke out of it, and then we formed a falling wedge, and then we've broke out of that again. And we've recently come into another falling wedge here that we've got forming. And now a falling wedge, for those who don't know, is technically a very bullish pattern. And so a bullish pattern is one which trends to the upside. Um, so it's a bullish reversal pattern and a continuation pattern. And a reversal pattern is one which switches either from positive to negative growth or negative to positive growth. And in this case, a bullish reversal pattern is from negative to positive. So it looks for the upside. We can also see here that it is looking good even maybe as a continuation pattern because of the previous trends um, over the last couple of months when we had this uh, pennant form here then we broke out into a falling wedge which continued our bull run into this next falling wedge. And so the next thing we're going to have to look at, um, really the most important two things I would say is we're going to have to look at one, see how it interacts with this 50 day moving average here if it bounces off of it. And if it does bounce off it, if we can break through this resistance line of this falling wedge, and if we can, it'll be a very bullish looking sign. However, if we do break down off this um, wedge support line and the 50 day moving average, if we go through it, then short to mid term, we will be looking uh, fairly bearish on the USD value chart. Um, so yeah, that's, it's not, it could go either way at the moment, but it is probably, I would say probably a bit bullish. The only thing that I would sort of say is a bit bearish is um, the fact that over the next couple of months, um, the next real thing coming up for LISC fundamentally is their rebranding on 20th of February next year. And so it's not for another basically two and a half, three months. And that's a lot of time um, where I don't see much price action happening, um, especially to the upside although things could fundamentally change and anything could happen. That said, let's have a look at the Bitcoin comparative chart. And this one is a bit different, quite a bit different. I've got a bit of a different opinion on this. Um, we can see that we've had 
So we've had a couple of bull runs and pullbacks over the last couple of months. And one of the things which um, short to medium term, which I'm not liking about the Bitcoin comparative chart is if we can see here, here it is. If I draw this here, we can see that we've got this head and shoulders pattern forming. And a head and shoulders pattern form, a head and shoulders pattern is a very bearish reversal pattern. So if I draw a neckline just here, we can see that we are getting close to this neckline over here. And if we break through this neckline, it will be looking very, well, quite bearish for the Bitcoin comparative in the short to mid term, especially considering the size of this head and shoulders pattern. It's not just one over a sort of a couple of weeks, it's a head and shoulders over a couple of months. And this sort of does correlate with what I was saying before about how we don't really have fundamentally anything until uh, February of next year. And then possibly even that may not have such an impact as it could. Um, it is just a rebranding, but we have seen in the past with things like Neo. Neo ran up, I think it was about seven times on its rebranding, but things could have changed. We never know. Um, but what I'm going to do personally, I'm just waiting to see what it does in terms of this head and shoulders pattern. If it breaks through this neckline, um, I'm just going to see how far it can go really um, in terms of Bitcoin comparative. But I'll be also looking at this USD dollar amount to see if we do break down to the downside to see if I can pick up some maybe uh, around the 5 to $6 mark. Um, but yeah i'm not sure completely like that's not my i'm not saying to go buy it i'm just saying that's my thoughts over the next couple of months um we have got some pretty good volume coming in um although it was a little bit of a it wasn't a pump it was sort of a, a little bit of a bull run but compared to something like this where we have seen sell-offs we have quite a bit more volume coming into the space and so that should be about it for lisk I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please make sure to leave a like and a comment below. Um, and make sure to hit that subscribe button as well because I'll be bringing out future videos on different cryptocurrencies very soon. And I'll catch you later.